University of Florida football player now facing serious charges after police were tipped off about the ball player's internet activity. CBS 12's Alexis Cruz joins us in the studio with what they found and how he was caught. 19-year-old Jalen Kitna, the backup quarterback for the University of Florida, is facing charges of possessing child pornography and distribution of child exploitation material. Gainesville police arrested him after executing a search warrant at his apartment. Detectives say an anonymous tip was submitted by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, saying Kitna uploaded sexually abusive images of children through an online instant messaging platform. Kitna told detectives he remembered sharing the two images but thought they were legal since he found them online. He admitted he shouldn't have had or shared that material. Now, Jalen is the son of former NFL quarterback John Kitna, who played professionally for 14 years. The U University of Florida has since released a statement saying Jalen has been suspended from their football program indefinitely. Well, crimes against postal carriers were once rare, but this month alone we've had back-to-back -back violent incidents, and there were two others earlier this year. In one case, a postal carrier was held at gunpoint and violently robbed, and some of these crimes are happening in broad daylight. CBS 12's Lily Ortiz joining us in Delray Beach tonight with what's being done to find the suspects in these latest attacks. Two people held a letter carrier at gunpoint right here in Delray Beach, and we're told the same thing happened on the Treasure Coast the same day. The U.S. Postal Service put up reward bulletins out there in hopes that they could catch the culprits before they strike again. Those living in this quiet community of Chateau Wood in West Delray Beach are concerned that letter carriers in South Florida have been the victims of armed robbery, including the one that happened here earlier this month. Lo que queremos es que eh, cada día este sector esté mucho más seguro. Johnny Bonilla tells CBS 12 News he's calling for added safety measures to protect the children and senior citizens living here. After investigators say two young men between 18 to 22 years old robbed a carrier at gunpoint and got away with their keys. Another armed robbery of a postal worker happened the same day in Port St. Lucie. They were both armed robberies with handguns. Um, luckily, the carriers are physically unharmed. We want to make sure that our carriers get home at the end of every single night and go home to their families. Tonight, United States Postal Service Inspector Blanca Alvarez says these attacks involving letter carriers are on the rise nationwide. Back on November 16th, one worker was robbed at gunpoint in Tamarack, Broward County. The suspect was caught on camera leaving the scene. Another armed robbery in Palatka, Putnam County in northeast Florida. Alvarez calls these back-to-back -back robberies a huge concern. When we have, you know, one and now another one that happened uh, pretty close to the other one, we take it very seriously uh, because these armed robbers are not only dangerous to mail carriers, but they're dangerous to everybody in the community. She says carriers now arrive to work every day on edge. We make sure that they know that they should be aware of their surroundings. If they feel like they're in danger or see something suspicious, to remove themselves from those situations and contact the police immediately. Holidays are the peak season for mailing cards and gifts. She says the best way to protect your mail is to not leave them in boxes overnight. And if they're not going to be home because they may be away for the holidays to either have a neighbor or a trusted person come and pick up their mail every day, or they can go to the post office and have the mail held until they return from their vacations. Now we're told the thieves in this armed robbery got away with the carrier's keys, but they left in an older model gold four door sedan, possibly a Toyota. If you know anything, give police a call. And right now the U.S. Postal Service is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for any information leading to an arrest. We begin this half hour with the crisis in our nation's classrooms. Yeah, here we are halfway through the school year, but concerns remain about the impact the pandemic's had on our students' learning, what subjects they're being taught, and who the school board members are that make decisions for our children. We have live team coverage tonight, taking a closer look at what's going on inside our schools. Our chief political correspondent, Scott Thuman, is joining us from Washington tonight. We'll get to him in just a moment. Yeah, let's first go to our Victoria de Cardenas over in West Palm Beach. And Victoria, the Palm Beach County School District welcoming its new elected board members today. Uh, what have you learned about them? Yeah, it was an emotional night for those new school board members, especially Edwin Ferguson. He comes from a long line of educators, and his new position is a full circle moment. 
feel like I'm coming home in, in some respects. Edwin Ferguson returning to his roots as the newest representative of District 7 for the Palm Beach County School District. Ferguson grew up in Riviera Beach. I graduated from Suncoast High and before that I attended Bear Lakes Middle. Before that I attended Military Trail Elementary and Lincoln Elementary. And he was once an AP chemistry teacher at his alma mater before opening his own law firm in Riviera Beach. He decided to come back to education to help improve the school system that raised him with the support of his family. I was just thinking about my parents. He comes from a long line of educators. Both his parents were teachers and his grandparents. And with that unique perspective, he has four goals as a board member. Those include school safety, teacher pay, school to entrepreneurship pipeline, and kindergarten readiness. We know that children who start behind tend to stay behind, but conversely, those who start ahead tend to stay ahead. And while he was sworn in Wednesday night, he's been hard at work for the last two weeks. He joined incumbents Marsha Andrews, Erica Whitfield, and Karen Brill Wednesday. I'm here to collaborate with my fellow board members. They all bring their own unique skills set to the table and I think if we work together uh, for the good of the school system you'll see some really uh, transformative and historic things here in the next year to four. And Ferguson filled the position of Dr. Deborah Robinson. She was on the board for more than two decades.